We spend so much time working to live and living to work just to accumulate stuff. But how much time do we spend trying to lay up treasure in heaven? We're going to talk about five crowns today. So stay tuned as Arkansas Alive begins right now. Did you know that you have the opportunity to receive five crowns as a believer? These are rewards that you can receive, you can have. But I, I, I doubt very seriously if many of you even knew that there were such crowns available. Well, the Bible talks about five different crowns. Here they are again. I read them to you yesterday. Let me read them again. Number one, the crown of life. That's what we call the lover's crown, those that love God, the crown of life. Then the incorruptible crown, then the crown of rejoicing, crown of righteousness, and the crown of glory. And pastors, you need to pay real close attention to this week because that crown of glory uh, belongs to you as a pastor. Uh, I think a lot of times we, you know, forget these spiritual things. This is, this is kind of like a lesson that I taught to our church many years ago. These are, these are what I call church sermons. These are family times where we teach the body of Christ about things that are important in your Christian life. And it helps motivate you to live a, a good Christian life. Okay, uh, let's go over to James again and read the scripture that we read uh, concerning this crown of life. James 1.12, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Now, let me re-diagram this sentence in, in thinking. If you're not careful, you'll read this incorrectly. And you think that you're going to have to be tried to receive this crown. No, that's not what it's saying. The trials and the temptations are going to come to everybody, everybody that will live a godly life. You know, it, it says uh, further on down here, uh, let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man with evil. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. In other words, Temptation, testing, trials is out there. Every believer has to face this. It says in Corinthians that if you live a godly life, you're going to be persecuted. Why? Because your godly life shows up somebody else's ungodly life. And a hard heart doesn't want to stop what they're doing. So when you demonstrate the godly life, the righteous life, the good life, a biblical life, a biblical worldview, biblical values, then those that are opposed to that get angry and they try to tear you apart, tear down what you say you believe so they can prove that their lifestyle is better than yours. They don't want to be exposed. Uh, they don't want their sin to be exposed. So James 1.12 is not saying that to receive this crown of life, uh, you're going to have to endure temptations and trials. They're going to come automatically. He says, when you endure, go through, overcome those temptations and, tri and trials, you receive the crown of life, not because of the trials and temptations, but because the Lord has promised this crown of life to those that love him. You're going to get the crown of life because you love God. <laughs> now, you know, we have local beauty pageants. We have state beauty pageants. Uh, we have uh, Miss America. We have Miss Universe. We have all kinds of beauty pageants. And, um, you know, the, the, the winner of any pageant is crowned with a crown, a tiara or a crown of some kind. Uh, the queens of monarchs, they wear crowns, crowns of jewels. Well, the Bible talks about crowns, but it also talks about those that run a race to receive a temporal crown and those that run a race to receive an eternal crown. 
because every beauty pageant winner has to give up their crown after a year or so when they've served out their time as whatever title they won. They have to give up that crown. They have to put it on somebody else. So it's temporal for a time, for a period of time. But the crown you're going to get from God is eternal. It's incorruptible. It's with you forever. There's more value to that. So the foundation is this crown of life is not awarded just because you endured some temptation, tests, and trials. The crown of life is awarded because you overcame those tests and trials and you loved God. Now, let's go back uh, to Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works patience, patience experience, experience hope, and hope makes not a shame. Here it is, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. This crown of life is called the lover's crown, those that love God. And, and if you go on over to Romans 8, beginning at 35, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? Well, isn't it written, For thy sake we're killed all the day long, we're counted as sheep for the slaughter? No. Yes, it is written. It is written, let's see, in um, Psalm 44. But Paul says, no, this is not for you as a believer. In all these things, he doesn't deny the things exist. He doesn't deny that these, these trials, tribulations, and assaults are taking place. He says, no, all, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death, life, angels, principalities, powers, things present, things to come, height, depth, any creature can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. So in that sense, every one of us have no excuse for not receiving this crown of life. We love God. We love God no matter where we are, what we're doing. But you have to be very, very wise not to credit the trial or the temptation, the persecution, the whatever of God sending that so you can receive the crown of life. Well, I ought to get the crown of life. I've suffered many things. <laughs> yeah, and some of it's probably been of your own hand. We make mistakes, we make poor decisions, and we suffer needlessly. Or if you suffer persecutions for righteousness' sake, then you'll be rewarded. But it's not the suffering, it's the overcoming, it's the endurance. It's running the race and not letting the trials and the tribulations stop you from your loving God, from your forward motion. Let me make these statements to you. All believers have eternal life. That's, that's what it says in the Gospel of John. And let's look at verse, chapter 3, verse 15. Whosoever believeth in him, Jesus, should not perish but have eternal life. So if you believe in Jesus, you believe with your heart, say with your mouth, Romans 10, 9 and 10, you, you, you have eternal life. All believers, all those that have believed in Jesus Christ, believe in their heart, confess with their mouth that He's the Son of God and God raised from the dead, you have eternal life. But not all believers will be rewarded the crown of life. Whew, that's scary, isn't it? Oh, I thought it was just automatic. No, it's, it's, it's just like a, a beauty contest. No, you have to... You have to do something. You have to enter the pageant, the contest. You have to perform, you have to do something. You have a talent. You have 
you have to do something to win the crown. The crown is prepared for those that love God, but <laughs> all believers have eternal life, but not all believers will be rewarded with the crown of life. So listen up. The crown of life is for those that are faithful even unto death. Go back over to Revelation 12, uh, excuse me, Revelation 2 and verse 10. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. The last part of the verse. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. A lot of Christians can't even be faithful unto life, much less faithful unto death. They give up when they get when the first problem shows up. They quit. They throw in the towel. But if you're faithful, even unto death, you will get the crown of life. Now, again, don't misinterpret this. You don't have to die to get the crown of life. You don't have to succumb to persecution. You don't have to... Uh, you know, suffer in this life to get the crown of life. You just have to be faithful unto God no matter what you're facing. And I keep, again, I keep emphasizing this because so many Christians today believe the wrong thing. They believe that trials and tests and tribulations and persecutions and hardships and sickness and death and blah, blah, blah is all tests from God. No, these are all these are all, as James said, the, the trials of life, just living in this life, in this earth, just living in today's culture. You're going to face these things. But it's the faithfulness, even unto death. So this crown of life is for those that are faithful. Uh, next, this crown of life is for those that love God more than their own life. Whoa, now we're getting personal. Now it's getting heavy, um, uh, as they say. Let's go to Mark chapter 8, and let's look at verse 34. When Jesus had called the people unto himself, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. This is one of the hardest things that any believer has to do because we are raised in a, um, how would I say, self-centered environment, self-centered world. Uh, even some Christian principles borderline on, on elevating self instead of Christ. It, it, it's not about self. It is about you. Ephesians chapter 1, read the first few verses. Everything God did, He did for you. He predestined us. He uh, blessed us. He confirmed us. He did everything He did for us. He, he, I asked the Lord one day, I said, if it's, because I heard, a, I heard someone say one time, well, it's not about us. That's a very humble sounding statement. It's not about us. We're nothings and nobodies, strangers and pilgrims, trudging through the heat and the cold, worth, unworthy worms. All of that is religion. That is not how God thinks about you and feels about you. God said in Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, the thoughts that I think about you are not evil, but good. And I have a plan for your life. The thoughts that I think about you are good and I'm working out a plan to bless you. So don't get confused. Don't adopt a religious philosophy. It, it, go to the Bible and get a biblical uh, philosophy. So uh, here he's, he's not talking about uh, thinking of yourself as nothing and a nobody. When I asked the Lord, I said, well, is it about us? He said, it is about you. Everything I've done is for you. He said, what it's not about is self. It's not about selfishness. It's not about self-grandizement. It's not about 
uh, elevating self. It's not about you in preserving self. It's not about pride, arrogance. And I, I can listen to people, and I, and I know it's hard sometimes. We don't realize how we sound. I can listen to people, especially ministers, and I can in less than, uh, you know, two or three minutes, I can tell that they are full of themselves. <laughs> uh, you know, and I, and I say that in love, but, you know, they're, they're, they're talking about themselves most of the time. Now, I'm not talking about giving examples of how you've uh, used your faith or God may have called you to do this or he wants you to share this with somebody. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about fully yourself, pride, a haughty spirit, demanding, uh, like like uh, one minister's wife said one time, said we both, <laughs> they got married, she said we, we both fell in love with the same person. <laughs> he loved himself and she loved himself. <laughs> now, you, there's a fine line here. We're not to judge and we're not to criticize. But you can tell after a while whether we're willing to deny self. I, I have purposely done this. I, I've done this on purpose to deny myself. Fasting is a good example. Fasting is a denial of self. And brother, when you fast, your body lets you know about it. What's going on up there? <laughs> We're hungry. <laughs> it's like that little TV commercial years ago. I, I'm really dating myself. A little, little voice came speaking out of this little boy's belly, malta meal, malta meal. We want malta meal. Well, you fast and you put your body on a fast. Your body speaks up. Your body begins to grumble and groan. Help. Uh, you know, your stomach feels like your throat's been cut. You're, you're starving. Uh, uh, we're, not, we're not talking about not being conscious of yourself. I think one scripture put it this way. You're to think soberly about yourself, seriously. What, what does it mean to think soberly about yourself? It means to think properly about you the way God thinks about you. How does God think about you? Jeremiah 29, 11. I think good thoughts about you. I don't think thoughts of evil. To give you an expected end, to bless you. So it's okay to think properly, soberly about yourself, to think about yourself the way God thinks about you. But the Bible says not to think more highly of yourself than you should. You're to think properly, soberly about yourself. You're just not to think more highly of yourself. And when you do that, it's hard to deny self. It's, it's hard to put yourself down. Uh, Jesus said, let him that come after me deny himself. Take up his cross, follow me. You could say it this way. Put your carnal appetites down. Keep them in their proper place. There's, there's nothing wrong with having desires. Nothing wrong with wanting to enjoy your life, pleasure, family, etc. What's wrong is is when you elevate that above where you should be. It's, it's when you are thinking more highly of yourself than you should. When you think you're better than anybody else. When you think you should get a prominent place. It, that's, that's when it becomes pride, arrogance. And it says the crown of life is for those that love God more than their own life. In other words, you keep yourself down, you humble yourself, God will exalt you. Uh, the crown of life, we're still on the first crown. The crown of life is for those who live for Christ and endure temptation. Endure, uh, you know, let, let's get a full understanding of that word endure. In uh, Hebrews 12, Look at verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him 
endured the cross. Now, let me ask you a question. Did the cross kill him? No. He died, but the cross didn't kill him. The Bible says that Jesus gave up his life. Jesus laid down his life. The cross couldn't kill him. Satan couldn't kill him. Death couldn't kill him. The grave couldn't hold him. Jesus laid down his life. So his endurance of the cross meant that he went through the cross. It says for the joy that was set before him because he knew on the other side of the cross he was going to lead many sons to salvation. He knew that his death was going to bring life. But his death was his free choice. It was his will. He died so others could live. It won't do any good for you to die uh, to save somebody because you can't save anybody. But Jesus died so you could live. So this crown of life is for those who live for Christ and endure temptation. Now let me show you how to endure temptation according to the scriptures. Go over to 1 Corinthians uh, excuse me, wrong way. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Now, if you're like, if you're like millions of Christians, myself included, you've heard this, you've heard this quoted incorrectly. Here, here's what the Bible says about enduring temptations. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but as such as is common to man. In other words, it's common to humanity. So there's no temptation taking you that's not common to being a human being and living on this earth. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able to deal with, but will with the temptation make a way to escape. Did you hear that? To escape. If the t This is a house divided against itself, the way people think. If God sent the temptation to teach you a lesson and God made the way for you to escape it, then he's double-minded and he's a house divided against himself and he'll fall. He can't be God. Do you see the error in that kind of reasoning? God didn't send the temptation. In James 1.13 says, God does not tempt people with evil because he can't be tempted with evil. Uh, I could go in a lot of different directions right there, but I won't. I'll restrain myself. So he said, I will make the way to escape it that you may be able to deal with it. So enduring temptation is dealing with it and going through it. And the crown of life is for those who live for Christ and endure temptations. You didn't give place to it. Oh, it happened. It came. You, you went through it, but you went through it with joy. Not because you were suffering or because you had temptation, but because you knew on the other side of it was a crown of life. That's the first crown crown of life. Now let's go to the second crown. The crown incorruptible. An incorruptible crown. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Just back up a few pages there. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Know you not, don't you know, that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So he's saying there are those that run in a race. There are those that are striving for the mastery. That crown is temporal, soon passes away. It won't last. It's not eternal. 
uh, you know, you work, you slave, you work, you prioritize your life to get the gold watch, the retirement, the vacation home, the whatever. <laughs> and I, unfortunately, I hear, hear, hear this far too much. So-and-so worked hard. <laughs> now they retired, and in a few years they're dead. They didn't enjoy life. They worked all their lives for retirement and then died. They're, they're working for a temperate, a temporal, a temporary crown. It's corruptible. It doesn't last. So what if you get 14 plaques and, you know, all the citations and whatever? My, my office wall is full of them. I am so blessed. I am so appreciative. I, I, I really am. And, and God's done it all. But, you know, in this life, we like to give people awards and plaques and we like to honor them and we like to... Blah, blah. I don't even have enough room. Most of them are in boxes. I don't have enough room to put them on the, on the wall. And that's significant of a, a life of service that you're trying to serve humanity and trying to bless. Uh, several years ago, I received the... Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Award, Community Service Award, for what we had done in our community. Well, I appreciate that. I, I really do. I have letters from presidents and governors and mayors and senators and congressmen. And, you know, you don't hear me talk about it much. But if I have all of that, all that's temporary. Where, where is it going to go when I die or the rapture takes place? It ain't going with me. <laughs> it's not going to heaven. It's not eternal. It's an earthly thank you, which is appreciated, but it's not eternal. It's not a incorruptible crown. It's corruptible. And, and you know, a lot of the stuff we get is, you know, it's, it's, it's not really worth the big head. It's not worth the pride because it's, I told I told my wife when we transitioned our church five years ago and we uh, put one of our spiritual sons in the position as, as pastor. And I told Jeannie, and it was a emotional experience. And I told her, I said, you know, one of these days, if the Lord tarries and the church goes on, we go to heaven. I said, one of these days, people in this church won't even know who we are. That's life. But we're not working for a corruptible crown, an incorruptible. We'll talk about this incorruptible crown tomorrow. VTN's on Facebook, VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. Follow us on Twitter, happy underscore Caldwell. And this episode's available to watch online. If you'd want to watch it again, log on to vtntv.com. Click on Watch On Demand. And uh, I want to encourage you to tell your friends and neighbors, if they live in other states or if they live in Arkansas where they don't get VTN, um, if they live in, live in other states, other nations... We'll see you tomorrow. Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching to. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221. Or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com.